Hello back again to more daily MSI content. I'm linking X2 and today we are covering another banger C9 versus Don Juan Kier. In fact, the rematch from the group stage now in the rumbling after C9 had a very poor start and Don Juan Kier was yeah, kind of lackluster with the 1-1 start from day one. We will see how the rest of the tournament will develop starting today with their face off. Let's get right into the draft. So starting with the band face. So down one key here banning Vulcan's Thresh. So that's a bit good ban for multiple reasons. First versus Hyper Carries and then second against Vulcan's Comfort. Vulcan part of the bot lane obviously from uh, C9. And yeah, they have been smashing it kind of really hard in the past matches and have been a strong point from C9. So yeah, I'm targeting uh, that spot for them. Probably a good idea. Ban's going on rather fast. Let's pause here for a bit. Then on the other side, Nar versus Khan. Even though the performance on Nar was not all that great, Nar still a staple comfort pick for Khan. And Nar also on the blue side, a better top laner than on the red side. So the value for Downward Kia would be higher than for C9. And Fudge is not really known to be a great Nar player. On the other side, uh, Fudge has played a bit Renekton here and there. But still, I don't think it's uh, a pick that is worth banning. As yeah, Khan with the Scion, for example, would play uh, a champion quite comfortably that can survive the top lane matchup here. And then the Lee Sin ban. So Lee Sin obviously can go in multiple positions, and C9 has played it in mid lane and the top lane. So yeah, Lee Sin a power pick at the moment, and mostly don't want to deal with it. Still, it's not OP and can be played around, but I guess the flexibility of the champion is quite annoying. Then the Varus versus Ghost. So yeah, C9 banning uh, the Varus quite often. Usually uh, they're on blue side, well, they have were so in the past, and were forced to ban it on blue side, which is a bit more uh, painful than here the red side ban. But still, it's, uh, it's a bit concerning that they're not uh, willing to trade uh, Varus for another AD carry, or like that they're looking for counter picks uh, to it. So that's a bit strange and yeah, we have to keep that in mind for the future um, yeah, tournament pick bans. Then the Nautilus here versus Barrel, most likely. I think that's a decent Barrel's performance on uh, champions like the set in the past uh, or in the last few days have not been too great and uh, a more uh, like safer and straightforward support like the uh, Nautilus would maybe be something that gives uh, yeah, a bit of comfort back to Barrel. But uh, still, I think that's not the right approach here. First off, Barrel has other comfort picks that are straightforward and more easier to play than the support set uh, in the Alistair, obviously, and the Leona. So that's not that great. And also uh, mentioning the Alistair, Alistair versus the Nautilus. Yeah, that's also a, a decent bot lane matchup, even though Vulcan, I mean, he has some highlight plates with the Alistair, but it's not his best champion. Still, that's a good matchup. Um, so here we see another issue with the Varus ban. So Senna now being picked for Ghost, first time uh, on the whole tournament that he is uh, getting his hands on her. And yeah, Varus would be, uh, or like is the most easy and most straightforward counter into Senna, not only from laning phase, but also for the later stages, obviously. Lethality Varus here in this case, not some on hit or uh, lethal tempo te uh, build. So now they get a Senna that is yeah, mostly uncontested. Maybe they have thought this through uh, because they were banning Senna versus Ghost in the past. And yeah, the Udyr, not really in line of thinking it's through because Udyr uh, being here prioritized over the Morgana and over the Rumble that are still open, even though there's some debate about Rumble not being all too good. Um, yeah, I disagree. Rumble is quite good. Um, so uh, the uh, blabber priority over these champions uh, for the more traditional Udyr, maybe based on his performance, right? Uh, but still, that's a question mark here. And then the Ash being uh, picked here to match the AD carry. So even though the Ash is not a very strong champion in the meta, she follows the same idea than, uh, as Varus in terms of outranging uh, Senna. And then Senna also being uh, a mobile and having problems with the Varus ultimate. Same goes obviously for the Ash ultimate and even with the slows of Ash's passive. This is something that is even more painful for her. So yeah, we see that they have prepared a, a champion here in the Eddie carry position against the Senna from Ghost. 
back to Don Juan Kia's side. We see they have uh, elected a rumble, obviously, which is open, and um, yeah, have secured a quite good jungle matchup with that, uh, in my opinion at least. Yes, Udyr in one v ones in direct one v ones can have the upper uh, upper hand uh, if Rumble uh, is not really having uh, his heat up for the one v one right with the added attack speed and so on. Uh, but in terms of clear speed and then uh, team fight impact, uh, Rumble yeah very straightforward uh, better here. Then uh, for Barrel he gets the Tom Kench, so that's a bit sad. Uh, while on the one, on one hand, yes, it is the better protecting support uh, in comparison to a Choga, for example. But uh, the impact of a fasted Tom Kench obviously is quite lackluster. So yeah, that's not super uh, super nice. But I guess the added protection versus the potential pick comp that uh, might follow up here on uh, an R three is already uh, yeah a good step uh, in that department so maybe it's a preemptive pick in that case which you could argue a bit more uh, uh, in its favor so yeah um here um c9 they have a match pick the jungle uh, preemptively and have matched the ad carry pick so yeah with the lulu being locked in this would be the uh, match pick for the support position uh, and also match pick with the added benefit of being uh, a counter pick as well as you yeah, see the enemy uh, line, so both teams have uh, picked uh, their bot lane and their jungler. So here in both cases the solo lanes will come in and uh, this is the advantage of the red side if they are able to do this. Um, because obviously they get a better pick set up here with the R4 after the ban phase and the R5 uh, after seeing everything. But let's just uh, yeah, talk a bit about the Lulu. Lulu, a pick that has been terrorizing solo queue. Yes, she has got hit a bit, but uh, the core concept uh, and her core strengths are still there. And yeah, even with the Udyr, um, that is a champion that can really benefit greatly from the Shredlias build. And Ash, even though not a traditional hyper carry in terms of damage, with the uh, with the added movement speed, the slow and movement speed buffs yeah, will will create a great uh, movement speed gap, which will make it easier to kite and uh, yeah outmaneuver the enemy uh, champions and also while Lulu uh, yeah, can't really offer sh AOE shields um, he can protect uh, the backline um, in this case here uh, only Ash so far from the rumble ult but yeah overall a good pick glad to see more AP supports and uh, more hyper supports coming in it's quite strange that we don't see them actually as yeah, they are still quite strong and yeah, are being played a lot in solo queue but i guess it's a bit harder to play let's forward here a bit as i have paused quite a bit so far so we see the victor here being banned um, quite often nowadays from c9 maybe they're not really uh, comfortable uh, in general with the champion but you also have to argue that their comms are kind of always uh, running into the enemy team and the victor would always uh, yeah, punish that quite handily with his W and other AOE spells. We have talked about that, so I'm not repeating too much. Um, so yeah, that ban makes sense. Then the Jace ban here. Um, Jace on the blue side, obviously more safe and can, uh, well not, can or, yeah, use a laning style based on zoning more. So then the classical push to, uh, to take turret plates, um, unless obviously has the rumble support rumble uh, yes he doesn't really like the um, blue side top side uh, jungle camps right where his blue buff is and so on these are not really his uh, favorite camps to clear but with the uh, jace in the top lane they have a very strong 2v2 obviously uh, in terms of high damage so yeah taking that away and always with khan khan's jace yeah that's a very known factor so it's also uh, same with the uh, victor by the way or showmaker these are also uh, not only compositional bands but also comfort bands so yeah they're like quite good they're not kryptonite bands right um, they're not like s tier plus bands but they're you know, quite decent bands showing that there is some research being done on the other side oriana a champion perks has played quite a lot and with her shield would uh, further help uh, you know equalizing the equalizer uh, and then nocturne so they want to play a more standard front to back comp here uh, on Dong and Kia's side. Nocturne always uh, a wild card that can be thrown in from uh, another team. 
to yeah try to disrupt this front to back style with more dive yes they don't really have the dive from here but with uh, r4 and r5 they could try to recalibrate and be a bit more annoying um so yeah it's a safe thing to ban it away as there are also like not glaring picks that i can see at the moment that would be really hurtful for their comp um so yeah that's uh, that's a good thing here uh, being taken away um so here we see the illusion being picked uh we can't say where it's, uh, where it will go either in the mid lane or in the top lane but what we can say now that uh, down uh, that c9 with the 280 carries obviously benefit even more so from the lulu as she has um, like, you know two targets to hyper up uh, if one of them should not do too well or if just one of them uh, is uh, high smurfing um the lucian here being blinded in uh in the top or mid uh, that's the benefit of the up three pick here with the fixed pick as it can be then uh be used as a setup pick for the r5 um yeah if you're interested in more of these drafting techniques and strategies uh, i've done a how to draft series and yeah i will link it in the top corner you can yeah check it out if you're more interested in that on the other side here the syndra not really liking it too much into the Lucian. It's not that great of a lane uh, to play. Uh, the Scion into the Lucian, yeah, it's a bit better. But obviously, uh, Scion will be in the top lane and they won't uh, do some weird flexes uh, where like Han will play Scion mid or something like that. So, yeah, they're relying on uh, the fact that maybe uh, C9 is uh, a bit stupid and uh, like flexes the Lucian into the top lane, which I don't really believe. I think. Uh, like Lucian versus Syndra is such a good matchup um, that they will go with that. Uh, okay, that that will be uh, sweet. But yeah, the uh, Syndra obviously here uh, a more burst source of uh, damage here for uh, Dom and Kia. They do have a bit uh, of a problem with consistent DPS here, as uh, Senna will take her time, and even her damage is not too consistent uh, at first only with time and the uh, items coming in she will be yeah, with added attack speed and so on will be a bit more of a consistent damage source and rumble yes he has his burn damage but yeah being uh, in the jungle it's a bit snowball reliant so it's not too reliable to have like this dps in uh, later team fights and yeah with uh, shielding and like movement speed they can then just go out of the uh, equalizer so that would be also in uh, its condi conditional dps and sooner obviously not a really a dps mage more of a burst mage um so yeah they could run into problems with dps uh, in some stages of the game um, but overall they have also nice power curves with rumble and syndra being strong early to mid and then while well, their damage is going downhill a bit in the later stages with potential magic resistance and hp coming in and also larger shields then senna comes more online with more souls and also Sion and Tom Kench will always be super beefy. Uh, right here, yeah, it's a faster Tom Kench, so even more so than usual. So then here, yeah, let's wait for the last pick and then talk a bit more about C9's comp. Uh, obviously, I would love to see Orn, um, my champion, so yeah, that would be great. But Orn versus Sion, it's uh, not it's not the best matchup, uh, but I think it's overall it doesn't matter. Uh, the Karma being here uh, elected. Obviously, uh, it's way better than on, um, but also harder to play. Uh, why is it harder to play? So first off, uh, it's Karma on red side, so she is way more vulnerable. Yes, with W and E, he is quite slippery. And to be honest, um, if we look here on the one Kia side, they don't really have lockdown uh, to CC chain her and burst her down. So I think it's better than uh, than it usually can be on the red side but she really likes to be on blue side. Then what is great about Karma top lane here with Lulu and the AD carries, uh, and even like Udyr being a great benefactor of the movement speed. So yeah, they have two uh, supports and two AD carries to hyper up. Overall, a very, very strong uh, comp uh, if all five pieces come together, but the same can be said for the Monkia. So that will be, if we will see interesting uh, yeah, team fights. They're not really looking to split push or like widen the map they're all looking to like mash up against each other uh, in terms of item breakpoints um yeah obviously a bit uh, depending on the uh, snowball that might come in 
but overall I think Downward Chaos uh, item craft is a bit more uh, like linear so they're uh, they're strong growing stronger or like they're strong at uh, nearly all points in the game while C9 is ramping up more rapidly with each completed item as they are amplifying each other right um so yeah overall top lane matchup here uh, again Fudge versus Khan will be interesting but obviously in terms of pressure Fudge has a gigantic advantage early on uh, with the range versus melee advantage and Khan being yeah, quite a lane bully overall after a few minutes Khan will then just face tank that stuff um but yeah for the first few minutes it will be in Fudge's favor jungle obviously as talked about many times uh Uyr is a fast hero but Morgana and Rumble are obviously faster so yeah, that will be Kenyon's advantage that he will have a few extra seconds. Uh, mid lane also, uh, mentioning it just shortly, Lucian will obviously have the pressure here. Uh, yes, there's some outplay potential for Showmaker, as yeah, the Lucian players have not been too clean in this tournament, but maybe there's something coming. And bot lane, yeah, it's quite interesting. Ghost and Barrel obviously, uh, yeah, super safe with their champions, are uh, have a lot of sustain and survivability. And yeah, on the other side, Lulu and Ash, they're actually quite oppressive. Um, yes, they have to yeah, watch out a bit as they're quite squishy and the Lulu shields aren't too high in the early game. But with the W spam and yeah, overall their range advantage, they will be able to generate pressure. And yeah, even if uh, the jungle uh, should come into the reset after like four or five minutes, depending on uh, skirmishes, they uh, can let the bo uh, wave bounce back and make advantage of the uh, better terrain for the blue side and then uh, yeah uh, blabber can uh, defend top lane a bit more if they should uh, like uh, used to, if they should agree to split the map or something like that but yeah this is all like speculation in terms of like game prep and so on overall like which comp is really better it's really hard to say i think um c9's comp is harder to play because um it's very reliant on two players and they have to do well uh, early and in the mid game to not fall too far behind because they're the uh, sole source of damage. Then also their sole source of damage is only AD and there is a Tom Kench and a Sion, which are really great armor stacking champions. So that's the next issue. Then yes, Ash has some range, but she's also not too great versus tank, uh, tanks in general. Same goes for Lucian, uh, but that he doesn't have range, right? Um, so the range disadvantage versus downward key is also there. Um, so yeah, C9's comp obviously has the means, right? With the speed buff Udyr, they have only, uh, also um, uh, an engage source that is more keen to pick because like it is so sudden, uh, similar with the Ash arrow follow-up or initiation. Um, while downward key's engage is more so um, yeah, I'm also kiting backwards, so their engage is more reliant on Scion ult and uh, Syndra EQ, uh, Q, QE, um, stuff like that. So yeah, there is also like more catching, but they're not really looking to engage fights. Uh, they're more so um, using the range advantage and then the Tom Kench to uh, to save the single target that is being engaged upon or like picked upon by C9. Right there, engage Udyr E and. Uh, Ash arrow are single target abilities that then big time can uh, yeah absorb or just eat up. So I would rather have Diamond Kias comp for a few reasons. I think their late game uh, is a bit better. I think their comp is easier to play, and I think their comp has more means to uh, make to have action or more power in the early and mid game stage. So they're not really reliant on a like, better laning and so on. So yeah, we have to wait how this goes. Obviously, yeah, Damon is looking here for some kind of re revenge after the loss. And yeah, let's come to the end card here. Uh, yeah, thank you all for sticking by with me. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please show it with a like. And if you're at it, yeah, I mentioned it daily content. So yeah, subscribe, please. Do not miss out on that. Would be uh, yeah, a great help. Overall, that's it for today. We see each other tomorrow. Till then, I wish you a great day.